Let's continue with our lab on logging in Linux with our syslog. And we're going to go back to our Debian client now. And what I want to do is I want to set up a separate directory for each system that is to be logged. This way, all the information isn't just piling into a syslog file. So first thing I'm going to do here is create a directory. And we'll call this remote servers. You can call it whatever you want. And then we'll go back into our rsyslog.conf. So we'll do a vim on slash etc slash rsyslog.conf. And let's scroll down to that section where it shows where it's going to be logging the information. Now, this is for the local system as well as the remote systems. So it's logging everything right into this syslog file. So most likely we don't want this. So we'll go in and comment that out, make a new line. And in fact, I might make a note here and we'll say Dave's remote directory for syslog, whatever you want to call it for a comment, just so you know. And we'll add something in here. So this is going to be some code to help separate everything. So we'll do a dollar sign template. It's going to be a variable. And we're going to do remote logs, comma, and double quotes. And we're going to give the path to where we want to store the log and the file name. But we're going to use some variables to separate everything. So it's going to be slash var slash log, just like before. But now we'll add remote servers, that directory that we just created. Then we'll use percentage sign, host name, percentage sign. So that's the variable name in Linux for the host name. So we'll use that. That's going to create a directory. And then we'll do another slash and another percentage sign host name. And we'll put dash syslog and double quotes. So that will create a directory for every host that we're logging. And then for that host, it'll put their host name in dash syslog as the file name for that syslog. Okay. And we'll go to the next line and we'll say that we want star dot star. We're going to log everything and question mark remote logs. Finally, we'll add ampersand and tilde, and that should do it. Let's check it. Okay, good. Save and quit out of there. Now, this will also make a separate directory for the local machine, and it's a good idea to do a system CTL restart on our syslog. And now let's take a look at what we have. If we do an ls within slash var slash log, we'll see remote servers. Let's change over to that. That is the directory that we created. And if we look in there, we will see deb client has a directory. Deb server does not yet. So let's go back to the Debian server. And we'll log in and check it again over here. And there we go. That has sent some log information. Just logging in sends log information over to our main system here. And there it is, deb server. We'll change over to that. And inside there, we see deb server dash syslog. And if we want to take a look at that, we can do so with a variety of tools. And here's the log information. And you can see the root login that we just did on TTY1, first console. So that's our root login. All that stuff is being logged. So good stuff. So now it works. But it's compressing everything into one log file. Now, you may say, what exactly is being logged? When you use syslog, effectively, everything that's being logged is everything that's being logged to the journal. It's the same information. We're just extracting it in a different way with the syslog program. You can still use the journal, and you can still make use of journal CTL. It's just that we're grabbing all that information and also copying it 
to either syslog by default or to a directory of our choice. So now we have every system in here that we're gonna log set up as a separate directory. Now we could go a little bit further with this. Let's go back to the edit file, the rsyslog.conf, and we could modify this a little bit more. If you think that one big syslog file is gonna to be too much and you don't feel like filtering through it, you could change that and we could make this something different. And we could do something like this, percentage sign, and we'll say program name percentage sign, and given an extension dot log. Okay, so what this will do is it'll take every program that's being logged, whether it's system D or SSH or root login or whatever it is, and set those up as separate files within the directory of the name of the system. And so that should be program name in percentage signs and dot log, that's the extension I'm giving it. You can do whatever you like with that, but we'll save that. And then we'll restart the service once again. Give that a moment and let's just log out of here. Log back in and go back to our client. And now when we do an LS, you'll see several log files. You will see login.log, you'll see R syslog D, you'll see system D, you'll see system D, login D, and then the older log file, dev server dash syslog. You could even attach dates to this with bash programming if you wanted to. So there's a lot of options here. And be careful though, because as you work with systems, the more programs that they run, the more types of logs you're gonna find here, and it can actually get pretty in depth. You might have a lot of log files there. So be careful with that. You have a couple different options now for how to do that. Let's go back to the server, and we'll do one more test. We can use the logger command to generate logs really quick, and we could just put in messages. So for example, we could say something like, test from dev server just to see if it's working. We'll press enter and we'll go back to our centralized logging server. Take a look in there again and you should see something new called root.log. Let's take a look at that. And there it is. There's the one entry test from dev server. So using the logger command is a great way just to test and make sure your remote servers are being logged properly. So that's it, Beyond Awesome. That's part of the Linux Beyond for this course. Definitely check out our syslog. It can make your job a lot easier when you're reviewing logs from lots of different systems on your network.